So in this video, we're going to be looking at the build along of the wraparound card wallet. I'm going to firstly take some images from Google and we're going to process these down so we can customize the wallet using the laser engraver. There will be a separate video showing the full process of this linked below. It begins on a dark night. Look at this. You're not going to find another girl like her in a million years. It's all so magical. I've never been fallen. That fares someday a boo. And does the say? Never done it. I've never been fallen. The printable file for this pattern, along with the file to use on your laser engraver, will be available in the link down below on the website handmadeballix.com in the pattern section. I tend to cut a couple of patterns out with different sizes on just so I can check my alignments. You should, you should. I ran away and I am not going back. Let's make some magic! So this is Niall Wilson's logo. He's an Olympic gymnast based in the UK. Uh, he's got a fantastic YouTube channel, great presence on TikTok, Instagram, things like that. Recommend you subscribe to him if you want to have a look. Links will be down below. So you can mark around the paper template onto your leather and then cut around it. I cheated here ever so slightly by using the laser to put my cut lines on form. There's this girl. So if you don't have a corner punch, don't worry, you can use lots of small cuts to cut around a corner. So just going to test fit to make sure everything lines up and we can see here the personalization is working real well for that. Next thing I'm going to do is bevel all of the edges and start on the back. This is especially important when you laser cut something as it'll get rid of the singe marks. Just from the back make sure you do the fronts as well. I'm going to use Tokenol as my leather edge dressing. It's a very nice, easy to use uh, sort of hand cream I'd compare it to. You can just use water or lots of other burnishing agents which are out there. Here you can hear the difference between the rough, unburnished edge and the finished edge. It's much smoother. I'm going to use my hand slicker and not too much pressure, lots of friction, lots of motion to round the edges up. So here I'm just using a saddler's crease to put a decorative line on the outer edge of the outer piece of leather. I think this looks quite nice and adds a lovely finish to your leather work. This is just some water. I'm going to rub it into the inside and the outside just to help assist when it comes to folding the leather over. And gently tap it with a rubber mallet as well. Just using my scratch roll here to mark where the glue needs to go. I'm going to glue the outer edge on before I sew. This is the glue I'm using. This is a saddler's glue. It is exceptionally strong and I am wearing a respirator at this point. So make sure I put glue on both sides and we leave it to go tacky ever so slightly. And then we're going to push it together. Again, I'm using the rubber mallet, just to help encourage the edges down. And I'm just going to rough up where the outer piece of glue needs to go. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Christopher Robin, what exactly? 
make sure to put glue on both pieces of leather that we want to stick together and seal the glue back up as this is very strong. All the things you can't hear and not bothering. I'm using some wing dividers here, set at 4mm, to put my stitching line around the outside, just so I can see where I'm going to place my stitching chisels. So this is a granite slab with some pounder board on top. I use a scrap of bison, just to protect the tools and the materials underneath. I'm going to be using my Chaos Blades 3.85 stitching chisels. I'm going to make sure that the stitch and chisel goes all the way through and I'm going to use my pulling block to slide the leather off of the chisel. These pulling blocks are available at handmadebiolix.com, they'll be linked down below. Now onto hand sewing. I'm going to use a traditional saddler stitch in a stitching pony. The stitching pony was made by a friend of mine, but lots are available online. I'm going to make sure we lock off the needle in the thread. I use size 4 John James harness needles. I've used the same pack for the past six years. And the thread I'm using here is 0.8 mil flat braided. This is not a video on saddle stitching. I would recommend going and looking at Nigel Armitage of Armitage Leather. His videos are exceptionally good. And if you can find time to visit him, I'd absolutely recommend going down and taking a lesson. When transitioning to a different thickness of leather, I do recommend doing a back stitch and then coming back onto yourself as well, just for the extra support. I use the thread zap too to singe the end of the thread. There's a review video of this link below. Next thing I'm going to do is use a drumstick to crack the glue that was holding the piece of leather in place. Now that it is stitched, we have something to keep them together and the glue can take up valuable space on the inside. I'll do this on the inside and on the edge. And I like. With this wallet, I wanted a rounded corner on the bottom edge, so I decided to just cut it, cut it round and then sand it off to a nice rounded finish before I buff. Back to the edge dressing on the top canal on here and back to the hand slicker. I'm going to use the wider end because the lead was thicker and just pick the most suitable pieces for the thicknesses that I'm going over. Then just using an old piece of t-shirt to buff the edges down and flat rubber side of the mallet to tap the stitching down. Is it a nice consistent look and make sure everything's laid nice and flat. Now for our good friend Aussie leather conditioner. This is beeswax based leather conditioner and gives a fantastic water repellent finish. When you've been using something like the laser cutter, it will also help to remove any of the scorching and singe and the smell and just flattens everything down quite nicely. As you can see, it will ever so slightly darken the material that you're using, so just be aware of that, but it does give you a beautiful finish. <laughs> So 
I'll use a little bit of blue roll or shop roll just to remove any excess and then use my cloth to start to buff it up and then test fit with some cards. This pattern I aim to get four cards in the main compartment and one in each side on the exterior. I do put some cards in here just to leave it to mould and I'll leave these cards in overnight or for a day or two. This wallet is designed in such a way that when you squeeze it, you can have a little bit of access to uh, slip your fingers in and get your cards out. I did also make a matching belt hanger keyring with the matching logo on. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more leatherworking tips, tricks and build-alongs, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon to be notified when new videos go live.